The original population of North Africa was black, just like the rest of Africa. The people we're talking about were called Berbers or Moors in the Middle Ages, but they called themselves Amazigh, which means nobles or freemen. The current phenotypic diversity of the Amazigh, highly variable skin tones from dark to Eurasian white, is not representative of the original population of Africans who lived in that part of the continent. Historical migrations and interactions with other populations from Europe and the Middle East account for the current diversity seen in the so-called North Africa. Indeed, recent genetic studies on present-day Amazigh's confirm their complex genetic makeup, showcasing a blend of various ancestral lineages. This is going to be a deep dive into this subject matter. We will assess unbiased historical accounts before the advent of Arabian and European racism, DNA, and skeletal evidence. The Amazigh people have long dwelled in the region recognized as Tamazga, spanning across much of North Africa. Their territory stretches from Morocco and the Canary Islands in the west to modern-day Egypt in the east, and from Tunisia and Algeria in the north to Mali and Niger in the south. True to their name, which means free men, the Amazigh have traditionally led a nomadic way of life. Firstly, like many ancient African cultures, they believed in one God, known by different names like Imana, Amen, or Amun. Just like the rest of Africa, the earliest inhabitants of North Africa were black. Despite some so-called white people moving into the area around 3,500 years ago, ancient Romans still described the North Africans as black even naming the region Mauritania, which means land of the blacks. Additional historical records give us clues about what North Africans looked like before the arrival of foreign invaders. For example, a 6th century Roman poet, Corippus, described the Berbers, an indigenous North African group, as having faces of the black color in his book, Johannes. Similarly, in the same era, Procopius, in his History of the Wars, noted differences between the Vandals, who had settled in North Africa, and the Moors, stating that the Vandals were not black-skinned like the Moors. The term Moors here refers to what we now understand as ancient Berber tribes, such as the Numidians and Masmuda, among others. An 11th century traveler from Iran, Nasser Khusrau, also mentioned the Masmuda soldiers of the Fatimid dynasty as black Africans. These historical accounts suggest that the original inhabitants of North Africa had a darker skin tone than might be assumed today, based on their descriptions in ancient texts. This recognition of their dark skin was noted by Europeans all the way to the end of the Middle Ages, especially when the Berbers, or Moors, were in control of Spain and Portugal. This is a description of an artwork depicting a historic battle in 8th century Spain between the Franks and African forces. Please note, this represents a time period before the codification of racism. In this scene, Roland, who is the nephew of Charlemagne, faces off against Marsil, the Berber king of Zaragoza. The artwork comes from the National Library of France and shows how Europeans viewed the Berbers, also known as Moors or Saracens, who were present in Spain and Portugal. In summary, these artworks offer a glimpse into how Moorish leaders and their societies were represented in European art, reflecting a mix of admiration and propaganda. It is important to recognize that the appearance of Berber populations near the Mediterranean Sea changed over time. While Roman rule and invasions by Vandals and Arabs had some effect, the major changes came later. From the 8th century, the enslavement of Europeans by Muslims and later, the Turkish influence in North Africa significantly altered the Berber communities. Today, Berbers with lighter skin often have a mix of black Berber, European, Arab, and Turkish heritage. However, in places like southern Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco, many Berbers are still predominantly black. For example, in Mauritania, black Berbers, known as Haratines or Black Moors, account for about half of the country's population. So who were these early Berbers? Berbers, like other African groups, share ancient beliefs that predate Abrahamic religions, but their language stands out as unique. The work of Professor Theophile Obenga highlights that Berber languages 
do not fall into Semitic or Indo-European languages. In 1910, René Basset, a researcher at the School of Letters in Algiers, discovered that the Berbers, or Amazigh, worshipped a god that was recognized across Africa. This god was known by various names, such as Amen, Aman, Achaman, Amun, and Amanai, among the Berbers, and had equivalents in other African cultures like Imana, Ama, Amani, Nyamien, Nyambe, and Nzambe. The name Amazigh, which the Berbers use for themselves, is likely derived from the name of this god. Just like in Egypt and Nubia, the Berbers depicted Amen with symbols of the ram, making the consumption of mutton taboo among them. They viewed Amen as both feminine and masculine, a concept common in African spirituality. Some Berber stories even speak of a mother goddess named Setut, who created the world, suggesting a predominantly feminine aspect of the creator in their belief system. This is similar to the Vodun faith's deity named Mau. Additionally, under the influence of the Carthaginians, the Berbers adopted the worship of Astarte and Tanit, Carthaginian deities that corresponded to the Egyptian gods Isis and Nith. This shows how Berber spirituality was interconnected with wider religious traditions in Africa and the so-called Near East, which historically is still part of Africa. While the famous pharaonic civilization of Egypt, which originated in Nubia, now modern-day Sudan, drew much of its knowledge from the African Great Lakes region, the Sahara's cultures, including the Berbers' practice of mummification, may have contributed to its traditions as well. Indeed, there is evidence that the technique of mummification was being practiced by the ancestors of the Berbers, or Amazigh, over 9,500 years ago. This was revealed by the discovery of a mummy in a place called Uan Muhugiag, in the Sahara Desert, near the border of Libya and Algeria. The significant discovery at Uan Muhugiag was the remarkably preserved mummy of a young boy, around two and a half years old, who was embalmed and placed in a fetal position inside a sack made from antelope skin, further protected with a layer of leaves. The mummy showed signs of embalming, including removal of internal organs and the use of an organic preservative. In 1958, a thorough analysis led by Antonio Asenzi on the mummy revealed the child had features typical of black or what he reported as negroid ancestry. He was carbon dated to be 5,600 years old. In a subsequent study by Sukopova in 2013, she studied the skin of the mummified child. She verified that the remains of the child were unquestionably that of a dark-skinned individual. The mummy predates the earliest Egyptian mummy by at least a thousand years. Its complex method of removing internal organs suggests the presence of a remarkably advanced civilization. Scholars assert that the central Saharan African inhabitants of the area, which for the uninitiated means they were black, may have impacted the mummification techniques later adopted in ancient Egypt, a thousand years after this find. It is also worth noting that the Sahara was not always an arid desert. Indeed, the axial precession of the earth accounts for significant changes in rain patterns in this part of Africa every 23,000 years. Progressive desertification of the Sahara led to the migration of black populations southwards in search of fresh water sources. Others moved east towards the River Nile. Over time, the demographic and genetic landscape of North Africa has changed significantly due to migrations, invasions, and various other historical events. The current phenotypic makeup of North Africa is not representative of the original black people who inhabited this part of the continent. So-called scholars from Europe, after discovering the influence of black people in the central Sahara, have started a systematic movement to whitewash the history of North Africa to establish not just Libyans, but also Egyptians as being of mixed Iberian and Capsian origin. In simple terms, they assert that proto-Berber groups were originally from Neolithic Europe. Random excavations and subsequent DNA analysis carried out on remains found in the Maghreb have filled the scientific literature. We believe this is a further attempt by Western scholars to muddy the history of North Africa. We are preparing part two of this series and will be exposing the glaring intellectual dishonesty exhibited by the authors of these papers. It is certain that the savants, il y a 150 ans, Les contemporains de la naissance de l'égyptologie moderne savaient parfaitement que l'Égypte était une civilisation nègre, 
un nègre africain, ils ne manquaient pas de science, absolument pas. Mais ils ont falsifié sciemment l'histoire. Until the lions have their own historians, the tales of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. <laughs>